Hi everyone, my name is Aristides Alexander and I'm one of the second year emergency medicine residents at Advocate Christ Medical Center in Oaklawn, Illinois. This is the first lecture I'll be giving in a series of EKG lectures which will primarily focus on EKGs as relevant for the emergency physician. Um, my first lecture is just going to be a quick and dirty overview of uh, the pathophysiology of the EKG. It's titled Depolarize, Repolarize, and Repeat. So this is your heart. Yes, I know it's a beautiful drawing. It's a little bit crude. You're going to have to use your imagination a little bit. I did draw it myself, but I promise all the important structural components are there. So just to get started, um, we have our four basic chambers, our right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, and left ventricle, as well as our intraventricular septum. And we have our two nodes, our sinoatrial node and our atrioventricular node, as well as our left and right bundle branches. Uh, so basically what happens, our heart decides it wants to have a beat, so we send a signal out from our SA node, which is the pacemaker of the heart. This travels down to the AV node, which then gets traveled through the intraventricular septum through the bundle of his, and then via both the left and right bundle branches. This causes contraction of the heart. So next we're going to talk a little bit about the different leads that we're going to be placing on our patients when obtaining our 12 lead EKG in the ER. The first set of leads we're going to place is going to be our standard limb leads, and these are typically located on the left shoulder, right shoulder, as well as the left thigh. And on our EKG, these leads are going to give us our leads 1, 2, 3, as well as our augmented leads AVF, AVL, and AVR. The second set of leads that we're going to be placing is our precordial leads. These are placed horizontally across the chest, and these are going to give us our leads V1 through V6 on our 12 lead EKG. So now let's talk a little bit more about our limb leads and how those are represented on our 12 lead EKG. So as mentioned in the previous slide, our limb leads are going to give us our three standard leads and our three augmented leads. So our three standard leads are going to be represented by leads 1, 2, and 3 in our EKG. As seen in this image, leads 1, 2, and 3 are what are called bipolar leads. These leads consist of both a positive and negative electrode, hence bipolar, and on the EKG, they represent the potential difference between the two electrodes. On the other hand, we have our unipolar leads, which are augmented leads AVF, AVL, and AVR. Unlike the bipolar leads, these leads are only interpreted at one electrode, and hence gives us a different picture from the bipolar leads when interpreting our EKG. So now let's talk about how this information gets interpreted in our EKG. The image on the screen represents a 360 degree representation of the different vectors of the leads that we discussed earlier. So at any given moment, our heart's going to produce an electrical wave, which is going to travel in a specific direction. This is known as a vector. And depending on what direction this net vector is going, this is what's going to give us our positive and negative deflections on our EKG. So for example, a vector traveling parallel to lead 2, for example, is going to give a complete positive deflection, whereas if that vector was traveling away from lead 2, as in the direction of negative lead 2, you're going to receive a negative deflection on the EKG. So here we can see a little better representation of what's going on. So as you can see, our net vector, which is represented as the big yellow arrow, is pointed mostly in direction of lead 2 and somewhat direction of lead 1. Therefore, the most net positive deflection is going to be represented on lead 2 on the EKG. This is opposed to the lead AVR, which is in the complete opposite direction of the net yellow vector. As you can see here, there's a net negative deflection in lead AVR. Additionally, any lead which is going to be perpendicular to the net vector is going to produce a net vector of zero. Essentially what this means is that you're going to have equal positive and negative deflections, which will essentially cancel each other out. This can be seen, for example, in lead AVL, which shows both positive and negative deflections of approximately equal value. Hence, the total net deflection will be equal to zero. So moving on, let's take a quick look at our precordial leads. Here we can see a cross section of the body with the corresponding leads V1 through V6. As with the limb leads, any wave of electrical activity traveling towards the lead is going to produce a positive deflection, whereas any wave traveling away from the lead is going to produce a negative deflection. So now that we understand a little bit more about the electrophysiology of the EKG, we can talk about what all this means when looking at the heart. Here is a graphic depiction of the different areas of the heart which are represented by the limb leads and the precordial leads on the EKG. Here we see that leads V1 through V4 are located mostly in the anterior region of the heart wall. So this essentially will represent the anterior and septal regions of the heart. So when looking at the EKG, that's what we're analyzing when looking at leads V1 through V4. 
If we look at leads AVL1, V5, and V6, now we're looking at a different area of the heart. Here we're looking more of the lateral wall. So when, again, looking at the EKG, that's the area of the heart that we're analyzing. And finally, when looking at leads 2, 3, and AVF, we're really taking a greater look at the inferior wall of the heart. So here we can see how this is actually represented on an EKG. To reiterate, we can see the leads V1 through V4 represent our interior wall of the heart, whereas leads 1, AVL, V5, and V6 represent the lateral wall of the heart, and leads 2, 3, and AVF represent the inferior wall of the heart. So this information is extremely important to remember in patients that come up with chest pain, as these areas correspond with different blood supplies of the heart. And therefore, if a patient is having a STEMI, for example, we can identify which blood supply is being affected based on uh, where the elevations are located on the EKG. So that's the end of the first lecture on the electrophysiology of the EKG. Hopefully it wasn't too simple and you guys learned something from it. Um, next, we'll be talking about the uh, interpreting the EKGs in the emergency department. Thank you.